Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker, my name's Matt. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a simple Global Protect deployment on a Palo Alto virtual next generation firewall using VMware Workstation. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. So what is Global Protect? Well, Global Protect extends next generation firewalls to the client endpoints which delivers full traffic visibility, simplifies management, unifies policy, and stops advanced threats. There are multiple Global Protect components, including Global Protect portals, Global Protect gateways, and Global Protect client software. The portal provides management functions for the Global Protect infrastructure. Clients that communicate with the infrastructure receive configuration from the portal, including available Global Protect gateways and client certificates that may be required to connect to those gateways. There are two flavors of gateways, external gateways and internal gateways. The external gateway provides VPN access for the Global Protect agents and apps from outside of the network whereas the internal gateways are configured to be accessed on the inside or trusted side of the network. A use case would be internal clients accessing critical or sensitive data on the LAN, which needs to be encrypted or separated from other users who are not authorized to access the data. When a client first connects to the portal requesting access, the portal identifies and authenticates the client and in turn sends the configuration to the client with information about available gateways. Gateways can be configured with priorities which dictate which gateway the client should connect to, or gateway selection can be based on gateways versus response. So let's get into the lab setup. Um, this diagram has been taken from my earlier video where I showed you how to configure a Palo Alto firewall in VMware Workstation. So be sure to check that out first. Uh, I will leave a link in the description. Uh, the only difference is, is the DMZ zone interface ETH1 slash 3 is not used and the client VMs are Windows clients. So before you start, there are a few prerequisites. Uh, you will need to make sure you have a Windows Server 2012 or 2016 configured with Active Directory and acting as a DNS server. Um, I also have a Windows 10 client configured and joined to the domain. Um, I've run a Windows update on both machines whilst using the VMNet Zero bridge connection within VMware Workstation. And once both clients were fully patched, I connected them back to the VMNet 3 on the 10.3.30/24 subnet, and then configured static IPs on both Windows machines. The Palo Alto file is licensed with a VM50 eval license. Um, this allows me to download the Global Protect client and host it on the firewall so it can be later downloaded directly from the firewall to the client machines. Using the same VMware workstation lab topology used in my previous video, the layer 3 interface 1 slash 1 will be used to access the portal and Ethernet 1 slash 2, the inside zone, where both the Windows 10 and Server 2016 servers connected to VMNet 3. Okay, so before we jump into a lab, I'm just going to explain that both the portal and the gateway will coexist on the, the same firewall. Uh, typically in a production environment, you would see the portal and the gateways on, on different firewalls or separate firewalls and they could be in different countries or different regions um, and, and then it would provide a much more scalable solution. But because this is obviously a lab um, and it's just demonstrating how the portal and the gateway work uh, and just also keep, um, reducing the footprint, you know, uh, using less uh, VMs inside of VM Workstation. Okay, so let's jump into it. Um, first of all, I'm going to create a layer three untagged in sub interface. Uh, in order to do that, we go to the network tab uh, and we click on the existing Ethernet 1 slash 2 interface and then we go into advanced. Um, at the bottom there, you can see untagged sub interface. We need to um, check that and then click OK. Now, with Ethernet 1 slash 2 still selected, go to the bottom and then click on add sub interface. Um, this is going to be uh, Ethernet 1 slash 2.2. Um, we're going to put a quick comment in here. So we're just going to put internal um, GP uh, gateway 
and portal. Um, and then what we're going to do is assign uh, this sub interface to the existing VR1 virtual router, assign it to this inside security zone. Um, we're going to give it an IP, something just completely separate. Um, I just chose uh, 10.2.0.254 on the slash 24 subnet. Um, and then on in the advanced tab, um, I assigned a management profile, which is the existing ping ping management profile which allow us to test connectivity to that uh, sub interface and then we can just click OK uh, and that's done. Okay so next we're going to move on to certificates. Um, Global Protect requires three certificates, one each for the portal, external gateway and internal gateway. Uh, now in a production environment the certificates are typically signed by a common certificate authority However, in my lab, I'm going to generate a firewall self-signed root CA certificate as well as an internal gateway cert and a combined global protect portal and external gateway certificate um, as both the portal and external gateway share the same IP address. Okay, so if we head over to device tab and then on the left, we're going to go to certificate management and then hit certificates. Uh, from here, we're going to generate uh, three certificates. So uh, first one is the self-signed certificate. So we're just going to call this uh, Global uh, Protect CA and then the same in the uh, common name. So that's Global Protect CA. Um, and then we're just going to check the certificate authority box and then click generate. Click OK on that. Um, next one is the external um, gateway portal cert so again just hit the generate button this one is going to be called external gateway portal cert I know it's a long name but it's easier to identify if, if needed later on uh, common name for this one is going to be the IP address of the interface so that's the external eth1 slash 1 so in my case it's 192.168.21 dot 250 and then we're going to sign it by the certificate we created a moment ago so and then just generate that and then one more this is going to be the internal so this one's internal gateway portal um, cert and then we're going to use the um, sub interface so the eth1 slash 2.2 IP address so this is going to be 10.2.0.254 and then again sign it with the Global Tech CA so the self-signed certificate and then just click generate. So that gives us uh, three certificates, the self-signed, an external and internal cert uh, then nested underneath this, uh, this root CA. Um, so that completes that configuration. Okay so the next step is to create an external and internal SSL TLS service profile. Palo Alto firewalls use these to specify which certificate should be used by the Global Protect Portal and the gateways. So if we head over to um, SSL TLS service profile underneath certificate management and then just click the add button and then from here we give it a name. I'm just going to call this EXT port SSL TLS. And then we're just going to use the um, external gateway portal search. Click OK. Add another one for the internal and give it a name int port um, SSL TLS. And then we're going to use the um, internal gateway portal cert and then click OK. So that's done. OK, so the next step is to define a server that the firewall will use to authenticate users when the global protect agent connects to the portal and again when the agent connects to the gateway in order to set up the VPN. So in my lab, uh, I have a Windows Server 2016 configured with Active Directory and is running a DNS server. The Windows 10 client has also been joined to the domain. Um, I have a LDAP account um, or AD account that is going to be used to do LDAP queries. Um, so here on my 2016 server, um, you can see I've got an account called Paolo LDAP SVC. Um, it's just a member of domain users. Uh, I've just popped it in the managed service account um, group here. 
Um, this is just so the firewall can uh, query the Active Directory server. Um, nothing really special going on here. So we go back to the firewall and under the device tab still we go to server profiles and we go to LDAP and we're going to create a uh, LDAP server profile and we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it lab um, server AD and then we're going to put the server's name in there. So it's WS for workstation lab AD and then the the server's address so 10.3.3.100 and leave the port at 389 in the server settings we're going to we're going to choose active directory and the base dn uh, this is my um, domain information uh, is configured uh, in this format which is dc uh, equals uh, tech talker comma dc equals local and hit tab on that then I'm going to reference the uh, the Paolo LDAP SVC um, account, AD account that I showed you previously. So that's Paolo LDAP SVC at techtalker.local. And then the password. got to get it right twice Let's try that again and then untick the require SSL TLS and then click OK so that's the LDAP server profile configured the next thing we need to do is configure an authentication profile um, so the the authentication profile it references the lab server in the LDAP server profile so we need to stay where we are, go to auth authentication profile and then click add and then give it a name. I'm going to call this uh, GP uh, users uh, auth prof. And then I'm going to select the type to be LDAP and then choose the lab server AD server profile. And then under the advanced tab, I'm going to click add and then we're going to select all and then we're going to click OK. So ultimately that, that finishes the um, LDAP server profile and authentication profile uh, and we can move on to the next part of the lab. OK, so next we need to create a logical tunnel interface for encryption and decryption purposes. This allows the Global Protect client to establish a secure connection to the gateway so in the web interface select the network tab go to interfaces and then to tunnel and from here we can add a new tunnel interface so we're just going to pop a one in there add a comment which is uh, gp uh, gateway uh, vpn and then we're going to assign it to um, the existing vr1 virtual router and the inside security zone Click OK and that configuration is now complete. OK, so next we're going to move on to the uh, Global Protect gateways. Um, so the internal gateway uh, can be used for user ID deployment and host information profile enforcement or AKA HIP. They also can be used to encrypt traffic from the client to sensitive internal resources through a VPN gateway. So let's create the internal gateway now. So still under the network tab, um, under the global protect heading, we go to uh, gateways and then we're going to click add and then we're going to give it a name. So we're just going to call it GP int uh, gate gateway. Um, and then we're going to choose the uh, sub interface we created at the beginning of the video. Uh, and then the IPv4 address is the IP associated with that interface authentication uh, is going to be using the service profile so if you go in and drop down and use the internal port ssl tls service profile and then under the client authentication you're going to click add and we're just going to call this uh, lab ad um, os is any um, you can change this to be whatever you want it to be um, 
authentication profile is the um, is the GP users auth profile that we created earlier. Uh, click OK. So that completes the internal gateway. So now the external gateway, um, which is the VPN gateway that Global Protect clients connect to when they are outside of the corporate network. So again, just click on the add, give it a name. So GP uh, EXT uh, gateway. Um, the interface will be the outside zone interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 and then the associated IP address of 192.168.21.250 is going to be used. Go to the authentication tab and underneath the server authentication, again, we're going to choose the service profile. Um, this time it's the external one. Uh, client authentication, this is just a repeat, so we just call it um, lab AD. And then we're going to use the same Global Protect users all profile as before and then click OK. Um, we've got a little bit more work to do on this one. So we need to go to um, the agent tab and I'm going to use the tunnel mode on this configuration. So tunnel mode is optional. Um, it's an optional configuration um, and I, where IPsec is enabled by default. Um, but as you see, if I select the tunnel interface I created earlier, I could uncheck that. Um, and by unchecking that, it will fall back to SSL. So I'm going to use this tunnel interface. Um, I'm just going to leave it default and then go into client settings and then click add. And I'm going to call this um, GP uh, client config. Uh, and then we're going to um, create an IP pool for uh, the users. So the, the Global Protect client will get an IP from the IP pools defined here. So I'm just going to make one up 192.168.100.200 uh, and then use a dash 192.168.100.210. That gives me a range of IPs, so it gives me 10 IP addresses that can be assigned to each one IP to each of the 10 clients. Um, and so that's that's the pool configured. Um, and then finally, under the network services tab, um, I'm going to set the primary DNS server to be my internal um, DNS server, which is the uh, Windows 2016. So I'm going to do um, 10.3.3.100. And then I'm going to set Google's DNS as the secondary. Um, and then click OK. Um, let's just have a look at this. So for some reason it didn't take the IP address. Let's do that again. There we go. So now we've got the, both the gateway set up. Um, the internal gateway is using the sub interface. And the associated IP is 10.20.254. The external gateway um, is um, on the outside zone interface, ETH1 one slash 1, and is using 192.168.21.250. Um, and, um, and we've got a pool set up as well. So those gateways are now configured, and we can now move on to the uh, portal configuration. So as I mentioned in the video earlier, the portal provides management functions for the Global Protect infrastructure. Clients that communicate with the infrastructure receive configuration from the portal, including available gateways and client certificates that may be required to connect to those gateways. So we're going to create a, a new portal. So from the network tab under the Global Protect um, heading, we're going to click on portals and then we're going to click add. And then we're going to give it a name. So this is uh, GP portal. And the interface is going to be Ethernet 1 slash 1. And the IPv4 address should be in the drop down box. So in my case, it's the 192.168.21.250. Then you're going to hit the authentication tab. And underneath the server authentication, we're going to choose the external um, service profile. Uh, and just select that. And then under the client authentication, we're going to give it a name. So this is going to be lab um, AD. And then we're going to choose the authentication profile 
created earlier called GP users auth prof and then click OK. Uh, then we need to click on the agent tab and at the bottom we're going to add the trusted root CA. So it's the global protect CA that we created earlier on the firewall. Now we need to click on add underneath the agent um, section and uh, we're going to give this a name of uh, portal uh, agent config uh, and then we're going to click on the internal tab so this part of the configuration is for the global tech internal host detection this is a feature that uses reverse dns lookup on the windows ad server which will attempt to resolve the ip address 10.2.0.254 to a, a fully qualified domain name um, and if successful, the global tech client will connect to the internal gateway. If the reverse DNS lookup fails, the client will connect to the external gateway. So on the internal tab, we're going to select the internal host detection. We're going to add the sub interface IP address we created, which is 10 dot, um, 10 .2 and then I have a fully qualified uh, domain name configured on the Windows server. So it is uh, gp uh, int gateway dot tech talker dot local. So if I go over to the server, uh, the Windows 2016 server, and show you the DNS settings. So if I go into DNS and the forward lookup zone here is the domain techtalker.local and you can see there I've got uh, gp int so gp hyphen int hyphen gw and then it's if you if you ping that that would give you the ip 10.2.0254 which is the uh, sub interface so the the, the portal uh, ip address and if you go to reverse lookup zones I created the new reverse lookup zone and there's an entry in there, a pointer record, saying that 10.2.0.254 resolves to gp-in-gw.techtalker.local. And if I was to go to um, my other Windows 10 machine and do a quick test, so if I open up a command prompt, and then I did uh, ping minus a 10 2.0.254 should get a response and as you can see I get a response from uh, the fully qualified domain name so that will work so if the firewall actually does a reverse DNS lookup it will get a response back from the server so let's go back to the firewall um, and just check so now we've done that so that's that's the easy part there um, now we need to add the uh, internal uh, gateway so this is just going to be called uh, int uh, gateway one and then we're going to select ip address and i'm just going to give it 10.2.0.254 and then click ok and now we need to go to external and then we're going to add an external gateway in which is going to be um, ext gateway one and again IP address and that's going to be the um, outside interface so 192.168.21.250 um, and then in the source region we need to click any um, because we're not filtering we're just we're just going to um, allow anything anyone to connect to that gateway click OK so we've got an internal gateway and an external gateway so that's the portal configuration completed so we can click OK on that and OK on that so if we expand it um, we've got uh, a new portal called GP portal it's on Ethernet 1 slash 1 it's using the outside interface address 192.168.21.250. It's using the external um, service profile. 
It's using the um, GP user's authentication profile. There's this using internal host detection. So there's a reverse DNS um, configuration there. Um, and it, there's two gateways, an external gateway and an internal gateway. So that is the portal configured um, and we can move on to the next step. So when a new user needs to obtain the correct Global Protect agent software, we can get the user to download it directly from the Global Protect portal webpage. So in order to do that, we need to um, make sure that the, uh, the agent is hosted um, on the firewall. So if you go to the device tab and then down to Global Protect Client, um, if this is the first time you've done this lab um, or, or click this button, then there will be nothing showing. Now, once you're at the page, at the bottom, you will need to click Check Now um, and that will just populate the page with all the available versions of the Global Protect client. Now, the only caveat is that you will need a license installed um, on the firewall to, to download from Palo Alto. Um, I did attempt to do this without the license. It didn't work, so I wasn't able to complete the, the, the demonstration without license in the firewall. But if you are licensed, then this is where you'll be, and then you can download it and then, and, and then activate it. Uh, and then the version that you've installed will show up on the dashboard. So as you can see, for this lab, I'm using um, 5.0.0. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is create a security policy rule to allow clients on the inside to reach the portal and gateway outside interface address. So if we head over to the policies tab and go to security and then click add, uh, call the rule uh, inside um to portal gateway and then source it from the um, inside zone destined to the outside zone and the destination address is the outside interface which is 192.168.21.250 um, and then application is any service i'm going to change that to any just for simplicity, just for demonstration, so that we don't get anything causing any traffic to be blocked. Uh, and then click OK. Um, and I'm just gonna move that to the top. Um, and then we need to create a no NAT rule, because um, currently traffic from the inside zone to the outside, outside uses source NAT. We need to create a NAT policy, so internal clients, uh, global tech requests um, to the portal and the gateway will not get their addresses translated by the existing outbound NAT rule. Once the new NAT rule is created, we need to move it to the top of the NAT policy. So create a new NAT policy. Um, we're gonna call this um, GP clients to portal no NAT. And then original is original packet is gonna be inside, destination outside, destination interface ethernet ethernet one slash one and then the destination address is going to be the outside interface again and then translated packet is left at none because we're not doing any translation so gp clients to portal no nat original inside to outside on the destined the ethernet one slash one interface to that ip no NAT, and then we're going to move that to the top. Okay, so we're going to move on to the final configuration steps. Um, we need to make sure that the firewall is using the um, internal DNS server and that LDAP queries are sourcing from the inside zone interface uh, as by default. Um, management services use the management interface and IP. So let's start by configuring the primary DNS server. So under device management um, and services, we need to click the gear icon and under the DNS settings, we need to change this from the Google um, DNS server to the internal AD server. So 10.3.3.100 and then we'll change that to Google's DNS. Like that, and then click OK. Then the service route configuration, as you can see, it's using 
the management interface for everything. So we need to click customize and then we need to look for DNS and click DNS and we're going to select the inside interface, so the one slash two. Um, as you can see, it's populated the IP address of the interface and then look for LDAP and do the same there, one slash two and then click OK. So that is the final configuration. Um, we can now move on to the testing, uh, but before we do, um, we're going to uh, commit all the changes. So let's just commit everything and let that push the config to the firewall, to the running config, and then we can go on to um, the testing. Okay, so now it's time to see if we can um, download the Global Protect client from the portal. So let's head over to VMware Workstation and go to the Windows 10 client. Let's open the browser um, and we're going to browse to the um, external IP address of the firewall. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.21250. Hit return, advance, proceed. Um, that's good news. So we've got a successful Global Tech portal uh, login window. So we need to make sure we have a domain user AD account uh, configured on the server uh, as we'll be using the account and the authentication profile using LDAP that we configured earlier in order to log into the portal. So if we go to Windows Server 2016 uh, and then open up Windows Administrative Tools and then um, Active Directory Users and Computers. Um, I'm just going to show you that I've got a just a, uh, a simple MB Tech Admin domain user account set up. Um, it is just a member of um, domain users. So if we go back to Windows 10 and log in, so MB Tech Admin and then the password. Now we're given some options to download uh, the Global Protect agent. I'm just going to download the Windows 64 bit. Doesn't take long. And then we should be able to run that installer. And then just click next. It's just a next, next, next. And yes. And close. So as you can see, that has successfully um, connected to the to the firewall, to the Global Protect portal giving you the option to download the um, Global Protect agent based on your OS um, and then installed it and then we're ready to connect. So uh, we'll move on to the um, testing the actual VPN connection um, and seeing what happens when you're inside the network and when you're outside the network. So first of all we need to enter the portal address which is 192.168.21.250 and then click connect. We're going to add we're going to enter the password of MB Tech admin, which is the AD account that I created earlier. And we're going to sign in. And as you can see, we are connected to the internal gateway. So if we go into settings and we go to connection, you can see that both gate gateways are listed. Um, but I'm authenticated using the internal gateway. So if I just go and open up a command prompt and I do an IP config forward slash all, you can see that the Global Protect Virtual Ethernet adapter hasn't got an IP address assigned and we're still using the, the static IP of the Windows 10 client. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this uh, this connection so I'm going to sign out I'm just going to cancel that for a minute and then what I'm going to do is change the Windows 10 network in um, so that it's connected to my home network which is the outside address of the firewall and then re-establish the global tech client and see the difference so first of all I'm going to go in into the um, adapter settings on the Windows 10 client and um, we're going to change it from static IP to DHCP because my uh, my my home network is um, 
is providing um, DHCP addresses. And then we need to go into the Windows 10 settings. And then we need to change the network adapter from the uh, VMNet 3 to the bridge connection. So that's bridged directly to the physical network of my home network and then click OK. And then we should get an IP address from the home network. And if we go into uh, status and then look at the details, you can see we, we've given a 192.168.21.45 address. So this is going to be like coming from the internet because um, the outside interface of the firewall is on the same subnet. So if we go back to the client and sign out and then we're going to sign back in now. So I'm going to enter the password again. And it's, it's attempting to connect. And as you can see, we've connected. So connected, you are securely connected to the corporate network. So now if we go into the gear icon and go to settings and go to the connection tab, the internal gateway has now disappeared and we've got a full tunnel um, into the corporate network via the external gateway and we're authenticated. So if we go back to the Palo Alto and we go to network and gateways and if we go to the external gateway and click on the hyperlink the remote users hyperlink and if we just enlarge this and then just adjust these columns you can now see any current user that is connected to the external gateway and as you can see there's the MB tech admin user I'm coming from the um, workstation lab client it's a Windows 10 uh, and it's been given an IP address of 192.168.100.200 um, and it's coming from a public IP which is um, you know my home network and it's a full IPsec, IPsec tunnel. So that's been a successful demonstration of how to set up a Global Protect lab in VMware Workstation. Please let me know how you got on with your own lab. Um, put them in the comments below. Please hit that like button if you found the video useful. Thanks very much. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, Please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.